And we're now joined from New York by Dr. Leonardo Trasande. He's a professor of pediatrics at New York University. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Now, the uh, American Cleaning Institute, um, that is a huge, a huge advocate of the soap, says these reports, and we've been seeing a lot of them now in, in recent days, are overblown and exaggerated. Is that true? Triclosan is one of a large group of chemicals that are increasingly being understood to disrupt hormones in our bodies. And the World Health Organization in 2012 uh, announced a report documenting great concern about the public health consequences of exposure to these chemicals. Triclosan in particular disrupts the function of thyroid hormone in our bodies that is important for maintaining heat as well as other key bodily functions. And so that, along with other evidence suggesting that triclosan may be associated with the development of allergies in children, raises serious concern about the public health consequences of ongoing use of this chemical. Yet the FDA, which oversees chemicals in food and drugs, never completed uh, their safety review for triclosan. Why is that? It's been 40 years now. If it's so dangerous, why haven't they completed or finished their findings? Well, I think one concern is that is that the science about disruption of hormones in our bodies has emerged very recently. Second, there are some important trade-offs. We do need a way to uh, continue to maintain uh, prevention from bacterial infections. But we, we've always had the safer alternative of soap and water. And increasingly, we're understanding that these, these chemical ingredients contribute to human health and disease, especially in the context of children's exposure. Um, at the same time, these, uh, these agents are still needed in the health industry, and they have been ruled as usable in, in that realm. But how useful is it at home and in the workplace or you, for us to use it on a daily basis? I think the main message families and, and everyone should take is that in, uh, in, re in areas where the resources exist, it's easier to go get soap and water and simply wash one's hands. In resource limited or constrained settings, it may be appropriate to use triclosan containing uh, disinfectants to prevent the spread of infections. But increasingly, we're finding another concern about the broad widespread use of triclosan, and that is antibiotic resistance. Increasingly, evidence is suggesting that the ongoing widespread use of triclosan, where it's not really necessary, may also be contributing to antibiotic resistance in, 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 and we noticed in, uh, on a broad scale basis in hospitals the emergence of these antibiotic resistance infe resist resistant infections. And so I think this, this report um, is, the, is, a, is a thoughtful and, and proactive step uh, to balance competing health concerns. So what do you suggest people use at home then? Should we just go back to the good old bar of soap? It works perfectly. I don't think there's a need to uh, specifically buy triclosan uh, containing soaps. I think families can go ahead and and uh, select and actually take great care to eliminate uh, triclosan in their home. Soap and water works just fine. Good to speak to you, Dr. Leonardo Trisande. Uh, good to get your thoughts. Thank you.